Hey guys, welcome to Research Friday. I'm Dr. Moll. I'm Dr. Crisp. And today we're just going to review an article from a peer-reviewed journal. And, and really the purpose of this is to assess the clinical evidence that's available to us and see if we can line that up with our clinical experience or even mm -hmm. enhance our clinical experience. Absolutely. And if you'd like to check out the article, just check the link below. I'm excited about this article. I am too. Uh, this is one you sent me. It's called, Is There a Relation Between Shoulder Dysfunction and Core Instability? I believe it was put out by... Uh, the International Journal of Sports Physical Therapy in 2014. Yeah, great. Uh, great article. Great journal, great article. Mm -hmm. This one's really good. I mean... I like it. You know, I'm I like leaning it towards more of the, the dad bod, so I'm getting kind of tired of hearing about core stability. <laughs> but, yeah, me too, to be honest, but, yeah. <laughs> I mean, core stability does continue to be a hot topic in terms of manual therapy and active care or Absolutely. rehab. Absolutely, it does. Um, and even in certain uh, organizations out there that focus on health and wellness, they're mm -hmm. always focusing on how can we get your core more stable. Exactly. But this is an interesting article because it's one of the first. I mean, if, if we look at the intro, well, really when you sift through the peer-reviewed journals uh, back from 14 or before, there's pretty limited research on the, mm -hmm. the actual relationship between shoulder dysfunction Function. and core stability. Absolutely. Yep. Um, and so this is a nice little touch uh, in looking at those two and seeing if there's a, a relationship between the two. Yeah, and, I, and, and also what I liked about this article was that they, ju they did athletes. They just didn't do like dad bod people. They did like yeah. college athletes. I mean, individual you would typically think They're good. Set. They're a college athlete. Look yeah. at their core. They got the six pack, but yet they've got shoulder issues. And, in, and if you work with college athletes or pro athletes or any athlete, you know, we see shoulder stuff all the time. Yep. And so um, what they did is then, then the question comes up is, well, it's only certain, it's only baseball players or the quarterback. Well, in this article, they looked at football players. They looked at swimmers, polo players, uh, lacrosse players, baseball, softball. Softball yeah. is one that a lot of people don't think about because sometimes the throwing mechanism, especially under in pitchers, is, is over. under, over, and then also basketball players. Okay. So, so they covered almost everybody. So, I mean, really, in summary, anybody that's, quote, an overhead athlete. Exactly. Anything here. Can fall into this category. Yes. Okay. And we can even take some of the, the pieces from this and apply them to our standard population, whether they're athletes or not. I, I mean, I'm a painter. Correct. I do anything overhead. overhead. I, I take things from a desk and I put them up here. Yeah. I mean, anywhere, anybody. Now, one of the limitations of the study, uh, they, they did mention it was a very small sample size. Yeah. Um, so even with that, you know, when we look at small sample sizes, we can say, okay, let's toss it out. It's not really adequate. But the one thing I like to do is, like we said in the beginning, really look at how can I take this small piece of evidence. Absolutely and reevaluate my clinical experience. Yes. And is there anything that I can take from it that my patient can benefit from me sifting through this in a systematic way? Yeah, absolutely. Especially if you've thrown everything that you, the kitchen sink at them, yeah. and they are not getting the results as fast as you want and or they want. Yeah. Uh, one of the interesting things here is they looked at, they noticed with collegiate athletes, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. those that were involved in those sports, they typically, those that had shoulder dysfunction, mm -hmm. had, a, I believe it said in the beginning here, it actually had weakness in their, um, there it is, a, had a loss of balance. Yes. Compared to healthy athletes. Yes. And they showed some sense of, we'll call it weakness in the core stability, mm -hmm. even though they may visually be strong. Mm -hmm. There was some sense of timing sequence failure. Yes. With the core in relation to the shoulder, shoulder. dysfunction that they had. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when we're looking at a shoulder patient, so if I had a shoulder patient come in or you had a shoulder patient come in, how does this change the way you look at them? Well, it, sh it shows that, of course, you're going to start with your normal protocol, whatever your protocol might be, manual therapy, adjusting, rehab, whatever it may be. It's when that patient isn't responding. Because, I mean, we've all had shoulders that oh, they man. come in, you know, you treat them, they're quick, they're done, bye, have a great day. Yeah. Uh, but then it's that one that's lingering. You know what I think about? When I think of an athlete with lingering shoulder pain, what is a volleyball player? Oh yes. Anytime they talk about their serve or being at the net, mm -hmm. those are the ones that tend to. For me, they tend to linger, where you get some sort of presentation that doesn't go away as they continue to be active. Or if they're the high-level softball athlete, like I 
take care of a lot of. Uh, yeah, it's just that issue, and then they just throw and throw and throw and throw and throw and throw. Absolutely. So, um, so what they found out is that the balance, and then I think of, well, what about our normal pop? Yeah. That, you know, the, my, my goal is I just want to take this and put it in the shelf without paint. Correct. So you could add simple balance exercises to help those people also. Very Absolutely. True. Now, me personally, I, I don't like to deal with a lot of unstable surfaces no, in my office. No, me either. Office. No. It me makes either. me nervous. Uh, yes. I, I feel qualified to do it. Absolutely. But it makes me nervous to have any unstable platform in my office. Like a basu ball. Kind of, yeah, anything that's pretty unstable. It just makes me nervous because if I get on it, I get pretty creative and I try doing stuff I probably shouldn't on there. Yeah, we all do. And yep. I know my patients are going to do the same. Oh, absolutely. So when we look at if you have an office that's not equipped for balance training Something or to hold on for stability training, yep. um, I mean, this is a great opportunity to connect really with professionals in the field. Absolutely. I, if I've got a collegiate athlete, this is a great opportunity for me to call up the athletic trainer. Absolutely. And say, hey, ha we happen to go through an evaluation. Mm -hmm. Just wanted to touch base about their balance, core stability. Yep. What are your thoughts? And a great opportunity to really co-manage. Well, the one thing that we've that I've found out is working with the athletes that we do is when you co-manage, it makes life easy. Then you have a team. Yeah. And then the athlete gets better, or the lady gets better, or the man gets better, and then they get back to their life. Other than, well, here's your handout. Yeah. I often hear though, there's too many cooks in the kitchen. With this concept well yeah we can talk about that but yet in a kitchen as i've learned from you each person has their spot yeah they're the expert at that and then in turn you bring all the experts and guess what happens the patient gets better that's all that matters really i it's mean all I, that matters you don't have to be the be all end all to everybody you it, just be the expert at what you're going to be the expert at it really is great when a patient comes back and says oh dr chris so grateful that you fixed me Yep. But it's also, I think, equally satisfying when the patient comes back and says, Dr. Chris, thanks so much for working on me, but also for getting me with the right team members Absolutely. so that I can get where I want to be. Even if it's a surgeon. That's if you true. get them to the surgeon and that's the, you've got that good surgeon and they take care of it, the patient just wants to get better. It's not about our ego Yeah. at all. Yeah, and I think this, this actually summarizes that perfectly. I do for too. For me, it did. I think it's great. I, for I, me, it I, yeah, I did too. reiterates the importance of... If I have a shoulder patient come in that's an athlete in some sort, whether a mm -hmm. collegiate athlete, weekend warrior, right, and I'm seeing shoulder dysfunction, I may want to evaluate or need to evaluate the trunk stability Absolutely. and possible balance depending upon their actual athletic performance. Absolutely. Absolutely. And from there, I can co-manage if I need to. I can pull, pull up the phone, communicate with the right people, mm -hmm. and get that athlete or that individual back to performing well. Absolutely, and they'll be happy, and if you want to build yeah. your practice, fix people fast. So evaluate the shoulder well, evaluate trunk stability, and communicate well to the patient Big time. of prognosis and expectations. Absolutely. And our clinical experience can be enhanced. Absolutely. And you can get better, and that's the main thing. Yeah. So is there a relation between shoulder dysfunction and core stability? According to this? According to this, there is. There is. Thanks for joining us for another Research Friday. I'm Dr. Mall. I'm Dr. Crisp. And if you just want to check out the article we just referenced, look at the link below. And we'll see you next Friday. See you next Friday. It seemed creepy. It did seem creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the big yeah. <laughs> Maybe just a little. Yeah. <laughs> but some videos, they go, check the link out. And it's no, like, Oh, down here. Look down below for the link. Where is it? All right. <laughs> I have good shoulder good range internal of rotation. Right. Oh, bam! So finally, like to, you screwed up I like to identify too. who I am. I am Dr. <laughs> Maul. I am Maul!